Hello, everybody, and welcome to the International Field Studies webinar about lionfish dissection. I'm Kosh. I am the station director here at Forfar. Uh, sorry, the camera's a little shaky, just trying to get this set up. Um, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes just to kind of join in. So just hang out together for a little while. I did want to give a little forewarning. We do have a thunderstorm kind of rolling through here. So you may hear the thunder. The power might go out, which is very classic for far if you've been here. Um, but yeah, we'll just hope that that doesn't happen and sit tight. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, looks like we've got a few people joining in. Um, they're just going to keep coming in, so I'm going to get started here. Uh, I'm going to give you a little background information about lionfish here. If you haven't watched our lionfish mini-sode, you should check that out. Uh, I think it's pretty informative. It's really interesting. So lionfish are not native to this region, specifically the Bahamas. They are an invasive species here. Their native habitat is more Indo-Pacific, Australia, Red Sea where you find them here in the Bahamas, you find them in the Key Largo, you find them in sort of the Caribbean, and almost all the way down to South America. The issue with that is that they are an invasive species, and the other issue with that is that they uh, reproduce very quickly. So a female can spawn about 30,000 eggs every four days. So that's a lot of eggs, and they don't have really any natural predators around here. The natural predators that they do usually have are sharks, eels, groupers, any kind of predatory fish that can eat them, um, because they do are because they are fairly small. Excuse me. Uh, but just wanted to go back to that egg reproduction scenario. Um, so I know I said 30,000 eggs at once. In about a year, they can do about two million eggs. So that's a lot of fish. Um, and they live in about a range of habitats from really shallow waters to about 150 feet deep. So that's just a little background information. Now I'm going to move on to the actual dissection part. And excuse me while I move the camera down. We have a little interesting setup going on here. But here we go. So as you can see, we have our lionfish right here. It's not very large but it is technically one of the larger ones we have caught here. Um, we did go spearfishing a few days ago and caught him, so he's pretty fresh. Um, I'm just going to go through some basic anatomy with him. The safest way to kind of take care of this fish is to grab it by its mouth because it has 18 venomous spines. And so venom is different than poison because poison is ingested and venom is injected. So... I'm going to show you the 13 spot or the 18 signs, 18 spines, excuse me. 
So the first 13 are right here in the dorsal fin. Let's see if I can get these so you guys can see. So it's all through there. These are all very venomous. I don't know if I can get this close enough without getting it on the computer. But let's see. They have very, very pointy little ends on their spines. Then they have one spine right in the front of their pectoral fins. So right here, there's one on each side. And then they have three on the back here on their, oops, sorry, in the back here on their anal fins. So that's 18 altogether. And so the first thing we want to do before we start handling it is cut those spines off because they are venomous and I prefer not to get stabbed. Uh, if you do get stabbed by one of these, you do get a very tingling sensation in your hand. Your, you could get almost like numbness in your hand also from it. And the best way to sort of treat it is putting it in hot water. And so as I'm going through, I'm just trying to get as close to the end of the spine as I can. And you can hear that they are really hard to cut through because they're not hollow. So they are, they will stick you and they will hurt. So those are the first 13. And I'm gonna put them off to the side and you can sit, still have a little bit of the spine sticking out here. So you wanna be super careful when you are handling it. Next. I'm gonna remove the ones that are down here. And the easiest way is to just kind of cut through all the way. And I'll show you this way. Again, just cutting through. And what I would like to talk about is just the coloration of this fish. So they have these very bright colors as you can see here which would resemble being venomous and being a warning sign to many predators. So that's why I hear not only are their predators not accustomed to them, but also they have very, very bright colors. That is a very good warning sign. They also kind of are able to splay out their fins. And so this is how they kind of grab their prey and kind of corner them into different areas. It's really pretty when you see it, um, but it's prettier when they're in their native habitat in Australia or the Indo-Pacific. I'm just gonna cut this pectoral fin off just to make it easier for me during the dissection. And so we got the 18 spines off, nice and easy. Still being careful because as you can see, there's still a little bit sticking out, but we can be careful and watch as we go along. So what are we gonna talk about today? So the things that I would like to cover personally during this dissection is we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at the gut and see if there's anything inside there. If you do not know, uh, lionfish can eat just about anything. They have been found to have over 20 different species inside their stomach. Um, they also, sorry, let me get this little guy. They also are able to eat things that are two times their size and they can expand their stomachs to about 30 times its natural size. So I think we might have something here today because it looks like he got a good meal in right before we got him. And so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna grab my scalpel and being carefully, we're gonna go and make an incision from here all the way up. And then I wanna go right above to where its pectoral fin is and up, just to kind of be able to open that and see what is inside of it. And so whenever you do this, you don't wanna go too deep because you don't wanna cut through anything. I'm just gonna delicately I made like a little incision. It might be easier to go with scissors. So that's what I'm gonna do. Grab hold of its mouth. Just kind of 
snip snip through. So as you can see, I'm being really careful, making sure I'm not kind of cutting through anything. And I'm gonna go up. And so typically lionfish can be a lot larger than this one. We kind of got a baby one, but for us, this is a big one. They can be about, on average, I believe, 13 feet but there have been lionfish caught that are about 16 feet maybe even larger okay Ooh, this is a good one okay let's see gonna keep cutting back you can get a nice view here so let's see if i can open this up for you guys so the first thing I'm going to find is the swim bladder. And so far I can see that it is still intact, which is really exciting because usually that is the first thing that sort of pops when you do these. Um, the swim bladder, if you do not know, is meant to help fish swim through the water column. And it's this white kind of clear part right here. It's like an opaque kind of color. It's still inflated there, so that's really awesome for us. I'm gonna see if I can try and get it out. The other thing I'm going to look for is the reproductive organs. So with a lionfish, if you have a female lionfish, she will have like the egg sac, a very large egg sac, which is very easy to tell. And sometimes you can see that there are eggs in there um, because they do reproduce quite quick often. The other one would be the male reproductive organ, and it is a long kind of thin shape. Let's see. I am not an expert at getting out these reproductive organs. I just recently learned about them and how to find them. So I'm not certain I'll be able to get it out but I'm going to try my hardest just to show you guys and give you the best experience ever hmm. okay well I can't seem to find it so I'm just going to come back to it in a minute but if you can see so I already talked about the swim bladder right here this whole pocket is kind of their intestines their stomach all the way through their esophagus you can see it's connected all the way so i'm going to try and cut these out and hopefully there's something interesting inside because okay honestly i think there might be because i see something in there it's it feels very dense inside so i'm hoping we can give you guys a good show and it'll be interesting it's a nice nice pocket of just fish intestines and guts. Okay. At four far here, I think this is the most interactive lab and it definitely takes the most focus. I've seen students that are super into it and after they want to fillet their fish, and cook it up even because we do have the reef fish cookbook um, for lionfish specifically. So that's really cool. Uh, I've seen fish with lots of different things inside. Okay. So there is definitely something inside here. I'm gonna cut through here. I think it might have ate something right before we got it. Okay. Oh yeah, there is definitely a whole fish in here. So I think I snipped its head off by accident, but it, there is a little fish in here. That's crazy. 
And it looks like there is more. So this lionfish was being super greedy and got its snacks in before we got it. And so that's the issue with lionfish here. They have no predators. They're kind of able to eat everything off of the reef and they pick at the smaller fish first, obviously. Um, and they are really good at hunting for them. They're really good at catching them. They are those, oh, there's another one, but that one's a little more digested. So that's all we have in the stomach, it looks like. But yeah, they're those ambush predators, so they're able to kind of go at their prey, corner them like I showed you, and then with their mouth, they're able to kind of suction them in. As you can see there, they have those mouths that just pull them in like a quick vacuum, and that's it, that's all it takes. So let's see if we can get this swim bladder out next. So in some places they are trying to, especially around the Caribbean, I should say, um, they are trying to train lionfish to, or sorry, they are trying to train other species like sharks and groupers and eels to eat the lionfish. Um, but obviously that's difficult because you get into spear fishing and feeding them on spear and they still may not be accustomed to eating them naturally. So the best way is for either people like us to go out and kind of catch them and save them for activities like this, which is exactly why we do them at Four Far to make it interesting for people and a learning experience. And it's pretty cool to say that you got to dissect a lionfish. So I've almost got the swim bladder out. I did pop it, so that I'm sorry. It's not gonna be as exciting. But. Okay. So here we have the swim bladder. It is deflated now, but it is pretty large. It helps them to swim through the water column. It helps them keep their buoyancy nice and even. Um, lionfish are not very fast swimmers. They are slow swimmers, but they do attack quickly because they are that kind of fish that moves slowly, attacks quickly. And that. So next thing that I'd like to talk about, since we've kind of gone through the guts, uh, is the gills. So the gills are very cool because they help not only for the fish to breathe, but they also kind of keep their food in going down their esophagus. So there are two different parts to the gills. I can get in there. So all I did was cut down at the base of the head to kind of get through the gills. Then I'm going to cut out a piece of the gill just to show you guys. But here, let's get a better visual of this. So these are the gills. So gill rakers help the food go down to the esophagus, like I said. And then the gill filaments is what helps get oxygen pushed down into the bloodstream. So very interesting. Very interesting shape too. So the gill rakers is the inside part. Let's see. The gill rakers have these, oops, let's see, these little nodules on them right here. That's what helps the food go down. 
And then the other part is what helps the oxygen get into their blood. So that's a cool little part of the lionfish there. And all fish have, maybe not all fish, but most fish have gills. Yeah, all fish. Um, and next, I want to go and show you the heart. I've never done this one. I think it is a little hard just because you don't want to cut into it. But you're going in through the head here, and you can see it right there, that little piece of the gills, or the heart, sorry. Let's see. You can pull it out. And so the heart is obviously close to the gills to make sure that oxygen and blood are being pumped through. That is why it's all the way up here and not anywhere lower, but it's all connected. Here we go. Let's see. That's it. That's the little heart for our fishy friend. Very interesting. So I like to keep all my little pieces to the side so that later if I wanted to, I can go through them. Uh, it's very cool to kind of cut it up, look inside, look at the internal organs of the fish. Another interesting but hard part is to get the otoliths outside of the fish and these otolith bones are able to determine a fish's age and they kind of help with balance and that kind of stuff and stability uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to go for that today just because it's usually a little hard to find they are clear um, and they are in the head area which is kind of hard and could be dangerous if you have a very sharp scalpel. Um, next, I'd like to talk about the eyes. So lionfish have these crazy kind of eyes and it looks like they have eyelashes, which they're not eyelashes. They're just part of the fish and add to the flare of it. Uh, so they do have lenses in their eyes and these lenses are just a little bit different than human eyes. Um, I'm going to go ahead just going to pop that eye right out. There we go. So we have the lens here. And so the difference between our lens and their lens, they have this little ball. I don't know if you can see that. It's perfectly rounded. Very cool. Instead of a concave sort of shape that we have. I want to flip this fish over and show you guys something that's pretty cool. So fish have this lateral line that helps them feel vibrations in the water. And you can kind of see it, maybe not so much through the computer, but we have this lateral line right through here. It goes all the way through, which is very, very cool. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about on this wonderful line fish? Uh, this one doesn't. Some this one doesn't have to ha seem to have any fatty tissue with it. Some lionfish do have fatty tissue because they are able to eat more than they need to, and so they develop fatty tissue around their kind of gut area um, because their liver just doesn't need it, and so it produces that fatty tissue. But I think that's it. We've covered all the interesting stuff. Uh, I. I've showed you guys the mouth, which is very cool. My favorite part. It's very interesting. If you can watch a video of lionfish eating, uh, I highly recommend. It's very cool. 
So typically when you do dissect a lionfish, you also want to take measurements just to see. Like I said, their size ranges from about 15 inches, um, but in the Gulf of Mexico, there have been lionfish that are about 18 inches. So we're just gonna move our tools around a little bit. And you don't want to measure all the way from the end here. You want to start measuring from about here. And you want to make sure that their mouth is closed so that it's not making it larger than it actually is. So I have my ruler here, my little flexi ruler. And so I'm going to go from about there, there. So this guy is only six inches, so it's very small, but still it only takes a year for them to reach uh, sexual maturity and to start reproducing. And once that does happen, their population continues to grow. Um, I think that that is it. I don't know what kind of fish these are that are inside of it. I'm really interested by it. They look colorful, but I don't know if that is just like discoloration from being in the lionfish's stomach or if it's its actual color, then it might be a wrasse or maybe a baby parrotfish that you might find on the reef. But who knows? We do know that they typically do eat fish that are found on the reef because that's where they like to hunt, where they like to hide under crevices and live in those areas. Um, I did have my friend Alex dissecting a lionfish next to me, and it was about the same size also. I'm checking to see if she found anything cool. No, she did not find anything cool. So I think we got the cool one with the actual gut contents inside. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, I would love to answer them, or at least attempt to answer them. Um, yeah. Okay, there's two questions. That's exciting. Ooh, how long does it take for lionfish eggs to develop? Thank you, Kim. Um, lionfish eggs to develop, it doesn't take very long. I believe it's a few weeks and they're already able to be out on the reef. So they do, once they're spawned, they do kind of hatch fairly quickly and they do grow fairly quickly. Uh, like I said, within a year, they're able to reproduce, so they are a fast-growing species. And also, what is the lateral line used for? Uh, so that is used for sensing kind of electro pulses through the ocean. It kind of helps them hunt. So if there's a fish nearby or something that is kind of struggling, they might use their lateral line to go and find that prey or also just kind of swimming in the ocean. It helps them. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I might put these guys, little fish up for you guys to try and identify. Little, little reef fish. But yeah, that's pretty big. For a guy this small, that's about the size of his stomach maybe. Yes, so Margaret asks, can you eat the lionfish? And you actually can eat the lionfish. I don't think you'd get much meat off of this guy, but you can eat the lionfish. There are cookbooks. Um, one specifically is by Reef, which is Reef Environmental Education Foundation. And they have their own cookbook that teaches you all kinds of different recipes, ranging from appetizers to full course meals. Um, you can even actually use the spines as toothpicks, so you can kind of pop these in the oven. They give you a recipe on how to do that. You can pop them in the oven and kind of kill that venom, and you can use them as toothpicks. And also, uh, the spines are used as jewelry. They're made into, like, necklaces and earrings and that kind of stuff. Um, Elizabeth asks, what does lionfish taste like? Again, uh, I've never eaten it, but it's a, a white fish. I'm pretty sure it's pretty lean. Uh, as you can tell, they're not really that fatty. They, but yeah, you can definitely eat it. 
What is it? Do good. Do sharks eat lionfish? So technically, in their natural habitat in Australia and in the Indo-Pacific, sharks do eat lionfish. They that's like more their natural like predator. Um, usually, it's like reef sharks and that kind of stuff, and larger fish. Like I said, the groupers and even eels have been known to eat lionfish. But here, not so much because of their coloration, very, very bold coloration that you might associate with the venomous or poisonous species. And the spines, of course, may deter somebody. <laughs> Where can you buy the jewelry, Margaret asks. Um, <laughs> that is a great question. Uh, maybe we should start making some at Four Far here and selling them. But I'm pretty sure you can just Google maybe um, lionfish jewelry. I'm sorry, I don't have a specific website to plug <laughs> for the jewelry. I think that's it, that's all the questions. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you learned something about our lovely friend, the lionfish, maybe not so lovely here, but in their natural habitat, lovely. Um, next time you're at Four Far, be sure to do this fun dissection. It's very entertaining and, and, and you learn a lot, I think, especially about these species. And yeah, so thank you so much and have a great one.